Hello everyone, Jay Whitner here with Space Headlines. We do a quick recap of what's going on in the world of space. Today we're going to be talking about items that the media covered during the first week of February 2018. Our first item uh, pertains to SpaceX. SpaceX launched a payload using a Falcon 9 rocket and this was a joint venture between Luxembourg and SES called GovSat-1. For the flight, SpaceX chose to use an experienced Falcon 9 first stage. And since this particular booster was only designed to last for two flights, they did not uh, dispatch the drone ship to catch the first stage uh, after the flight. So the intent was just for the stage to, uh, to, to crash down into the ocean. In a surprising move, the robust first stage of the Falcon 9 survived the water landing, which uh, apparently was not really an expectation that anybody had very much. Um, and, and the SpaceX plan was to sort of expend this stage doing what they called a, a very high retro thrust landing. So they were just going to try to, to, to test out a very high thrust at the last moment landing and they didn't want to damage the drone ship. So they didn't try to, to, to save the booster and they were just going to let it crash in the water. But apparently the, the landing was at such a low speed, the booster survived. Pretty interesting. Given this turn of events, SpaceX uh, has decided they would like to recover the first stage that uh, was floating in the Atlantic. And so they're going to work on that, and they don't intend to refly the booster. It seems like they just want to examine it, see how it fared, I guess, with the, uh, the high retro thrust landing that they were doing. So we'll see uh, if we get any reports later on in terms of what they found when they, uh, if, as, and when they're able to, to get the first stage back to shore. In a very, very interesting bit of news, we've managed to detect the first planets beyond our galaxy. This is truly an incredible thing that we're able to do this. The, the short version is that uh, this was done using data from NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. And normally, you know, they couldn't detect anything that was so far away. We're talking about 4 billion light years. But using gravitational microlensing techniques, they were able to detect these planets. And they uh, furthermore appear to be rogue planets. They're not in orbit around a star. They're just sort of flying in space on their own. But absolutely incredible that we can detect uh, planets billions of light years away. Amazing. A bit closer to home, up on the International Space Station, the cosmonauts broke a record, uh, the Russian record for the longest spacewalk ever. But in doing so, uh, they were working on some antenna gear. The antenna ended up in the wrong place. So even though the antenna is not in the correct place, apparently the antenna is working. And the spacewalk, which broke the, the former Russian record, lasted eight hours and 13 minutes, which seems uh, quite a long time. One of the interesting things about this story is in the course of reading over the articles about it, I came across uh, information that the Russians, when they're working outside, they normally just throw away old equipment. They just toss it out into space. Uh, old equipment, broken equipment, towels, you know, they just throw it out, out the window, sort of. Um, Given the problems of space debris, this seems like a really easy way to mitigate space debris, even if it's a very small amount for them to bring, uh, bring their trash inside. So uh, hopefully they will, uh, will get the message as people read this that, um, that this is not a great idea. Japan did something quite interesting. They were able to put a satellite into orbit using the smallest rocket ever. Um, this rocket is uh, it's called the SS-520. It's normally a, a sounding rocket for suborbital purposes, and they modified it by adding a third stage 
so that it could be uh, an orbital rocket. The satellite, it's called uh, TRICOM. It's a, a small 300 pound satellite. But the rocket is only 33 feet long and about 20 inches in diameter. So uh, by, by a good margin, the smallest rocket to ever put a payload into orbit. This is very, very interesting for uh, small payloads that have uh, oftentimes been secondary payloads because it's not economical to send them up by themselves. So they end up sort of getting the orbit that they get as opposed perhaps to the orbit that they really want. So this is an interesting step forward for uh, small payloads to have dedicated launchers. An interesting report was released by uh, Northern Sky Research, and this pertains to, uh, to taking care of satellites while they're in orbit. This is, is an old idea that's never really been implemented of refueling satellites in orbit, repairing satellites in orbit, this kind of thing. The report indicates that over the next decade, the value of these services of working on satellites in orbit uh, could be roughly $3 billion or more. dollars. So a very interesting kind of a number. And there is a, an executive summary of the report that's available um, that hits some of the highlights. The full report costs $4,500, so I haven't read it, but I'm sure it has interesting uh, information in there and uh, an idea that's long overdue for implementation. We need to figure this out. It's, uh, it's ridiculous for satellites to be rendered non-functional because they're out of propellant, because uh, a solar panel didn't unfurl quite right, and there's nobody there to like give it a little jiggle so it can unfurl. These types of things uh, seem very feasible and apparently quite lucrative as well. Falcon Heavy's first flight was a huge success. We have a new heavyweight champion. It was a very exciting day. I went over to the Cape to be there in person and to, to hear the roar of Falcon Heavy. It was very exciting uh, to see the crowds out there on the Cape and, and to see especially the, the two side boosters fly back in formation to, to land for reuse was just, uh, it, it felt like I was in a science fiction novel. Very, very cool. The launch took place from Kennedy Space Center's Pad 39A. This is a certainly historic pad where all the astronauts went to, uh, to the moon, where space shuttles took off. The Falcon Heavy with 5 million pounds of thrust had uh, a wonderful sound to it as she took off and offers twice the payload of any other rocket, actually over twice the payload of any other rocket, and the lowest cost per pound. Uh, works out to be about $650 a pound. In this case, the payload was a cherry red Tesla Roadster. While the launch was a huge success and the side boosters came in and landed safely at the Cape, the heavily modified core stage for Falcon Heavy, it was of course the first time that it had ever flown, and it had in, been intended to land on the drone ship, ship offshore, and that did not succeed. So the, the core stage narrowly missed the drone ship uh, by about 100 yards. But as a consolation prize, when it, when it exploded, it had shrapnel all over the drone ship and took out some of the engines of the drone ship, uh, but close but no cigar. And apparently what happened was the core booster did not have quite enough fuel to do the final deceleration necessary for, uh, for landing on the drone ship. But, you know, the, the first time SpaceX tried to land the Falcon 9 uh, first stages on the drone ship, that didn't work either. So this will take a little bit of time to get figured out. And while the, the, the glorious sound of Falcon Heavy was still echoing at the Cape, Elon Musk was already talking about his next vehicle. He was talking about test flights of the second stage of the BFR in 2019, next year, to actually see the test flights of the, uh, of the second stage of the BFR. The second stage is the, is the spaceship part, um, which you see depicted here below. 
And it's quite a, a large, powerful uh, vehicle uh, in and of itself. He's talking about having uh, short test flights in 2019. Some of you might remember the, uh, the grasshopper flights when they were first uh, experimenting with the idea of recovering the first stages for Falcon 9. So this second stage is about 150 feet long. They're thinking that they'll have you know, short flights, maybe up a couple of miles in the air and come back down. But this vehicle, uh, Elon Musk has said repeatedly, may be capable of actual SSTO operations. The, the single stage going up to orbit and coming back down with, uh, with a very minimal payload. So if there's uh, not too much weight creep as the thing has developed, that might be a possibility and a very interesting one, something people have theorized about for a very long time. So a very exciting week in space. Thanks for being with us and check back a week from now and we'll have another edition of Space Headlines. We'll see you then.